So again, good morning and welcome to our second of two sessions on maximizing exposure for your business with your Google business profile. Uh, we are recording this session uh, and also have questions and answers uh, available in the questions and answers section of Zoom. Uh, so do feel free to enter in any questions uh, as we go. Um, I am Kim Palmer from Miles Partnership. Uh, I am our Destination Optimization Program Director here at Miles, and I'm joined by Henry Winkle from our team, who is one of our program coordinators. Uh, and if you join us for any of our one-on-one -on -one office hours support for your business, uh, there's a good chance you'll be meeting with Henry uh, to help you in uh, claiming or answering questions about your Google Business Profile. Uh, this is our second of two sessions. We did one last week on the fundamentals of your Google business profile. Uh, and today we're going to dive a little bit deeper on maximizing uh, your exposure. Uh, this uh, series of sessions is brought to you by Visit El Paso. Uh, Miles Partnership is working with Visit El Paso on a effort to uh, improve the representation of the market on the Google platform. Uh, and that's where businesses like you come in. Uh, what our destinations look like online uh, has everything to do with how our local business owners look uh, with their business profiles. Um, Miles is a strategic marketing uh, company who works specifically in the travel and tourism industry uh, with organizations like Visit El Paso. Uh, we work with Google in a number of capacities, uh, but one of those is through training where we have uh, evaluated the business profiles of literally tens of thousands of businesses and provided training similar to this one to thousands of business owners uh, around the US uh, and even down in the South Pacific. Uh, so as a part of this initiative, uh, Visit El Paso is also providing the opportunity for your business to meet with our team here at Miles one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, and this can be beneficial if you uh, are having trouble claiming your Google business profile uh, or if you need one-on-one uh, -on -one, uh, assistance uh, with a, a question or an issue uh, that has uh, come up. Uh, we will uh, post the link to uh, the office hours here in uh, the chat to everyone. Um, but you can also scan this QR code. This will take you to a Calendly uh, link for you to uh, book a, a Zoom session uh, with our team members uh, using Calendly, uh, picking out a day and time that works for you. Uh, this service is uh, absolutely free. Uh, so uh, Miles has no products or services to sell to your business. We are providing the support uh, totally free to you uh, through Visit uh, El Paso. Uh, and that Calendly link is now uh, in the chat. Uh, if you do have uh, any questions, do please uh, put them in the question and answer uh, section of uh, Zoom, uh, and we'll be able to uh, address them uh, for you that way. And there was a raised hand as well in there. Um, I'm not sure if we're directing them to that. Yes, I don't have a, I don't think I have a way of allowing someone to talk. So okay. if you uh, have a question, uh, please go ahead and put that in the Q&A and we will uh, address it here. Uh, so the things we are going to cover today uh, and do a quick recap from uh, part one of our webinar. Uh, we're going to talk in a bit more detail about photography best practices. Uh, how to flag photos, uh, how to respond to customer questions and answers, uh, how you can improve your online reputation by responding to customer reviews, uh, and using posts. Uh, and we'll also have time at the end for questions and the answers, uh, but again, feel free to type those in as we go. Uh, I also wanted to call out another great free tool available to you and your business, uh, which is the Local Tourism Marketing Academy. Uh, the Academy is an online uh, resource that provides um, 
uh, up to over 60 articles um, and information about um, different marketing tools for your business, things like email marketing, SEO, social media, uh, et cetera. Uh, you can access the Academy uh, through tta.toursandbusinessmarketing.com. And the access code is El Paso 22. Uh, we will also uh, drop that into uh, the chat. Uh, and uh, this is the program we're doing uh, is uh, affiliate program with um, with uh, the Texas uh, Travel Alliance. Um, so you sign in uh, using a Google account. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be the Google account with which you've claimed your business profile it can be any Google account. Um, and once you're in there, uh, you can use the right-hand navigation to explore the topics that are available within the Academy. Uh, or the uh, topic tags uh, here at the bottom of that uh, area. Um, uh, you can also earn badges as you go. So as you complete articles within the Academy, you can mark them as complete uh, and you'll progress from rookie to expert. Uh, the more articles that you check off um, that you utilize within the Academy. There is also a questions and answers uh, feature in the Academy. So uh, you can ask a question that goes directly to our team here at Miles. Uh, we can help address your question. And this is also where you can suggest co um, any content you would like us to add to the Academy in the future. Um, so to go back to our prior workshop, uh, one of the things we discussed was uh, the importance for your business to show up in what's called the local pack of search results. And the local pack is what shows up when we put uh, the type of a business and a specific geographic location into Google search. Uh, you'll typically find uh, a map and three to four businesses featured in that search re result. Uh, and that format of search result is what we call the local pack. There are three factors that influence uh, how someone shows up in that local pack. And those are distance, relevance, and prominence. Uh, we talked about uh, distance and relevance in our last session, distance being something we don't have any uh, control over, but relevance being something that we can influence by making sure that we have chosen uh, the maximum number of categories for our business and chosen all of the attributes that are relevant to our business, as well as making sure that our core information, such as hours and description uh, and photos are up to date. Uh, in this section, in this session, we will talk a little bit more about how you can influence the prominence of your location. So we're going to start uh, by talking about photography. Uh, in our last session, we called out the fact that uh, photos are a really critical uh, piece of the equation in how customers are choosing what local businesses they are going to work with while they are in town. Um, and I want to take that a, a step further uh, to talk about uh, not just the recency of your photos, uh, but the quantity of photos that you have in your uh, Google business profile. This was a study done by Bright Local. And what they did was they compared the average monthly uh, direct uh, searches that a business appeared in compared to the number of business, number of images that they had in their Google business profile. And businesses that had over a hundred photos in their gallery had almost a 300% higher exposure in search results than those with fewer uh, images in their gallery. So we're actually creating higher exposure for our business. And uh, to recap one of the highlights from our last session, um, just adding four or five new photos to your business profile every month can increase your visibility in search by 10 to 30%. Um, so do get in the habit of posting a new photo about uh, your business uh, frequently. 
Uh, but let's dive into that. Uh, if we're going to post photos regularly, uh, what photos are going to perform best on the Google platform? Um, first and foremost, Google has different priorities uh, for photography uh, than we necessarily do as uh, marketers. Google's number one uh, area of importance for a photo is that those images are informative. Um, and that actually surpasses whether the images are attractive. Google wants the images to tell the story of a place, uh, give us the scope, the scale, the context of your location. So first and foremost, your images should be informative. Now they do still need to be attractive. Attractive does still matter. Uh, is the photo eye-catching? Does it have good color, contrast, saturation, uh, et cetera? Uh, these are some of the factors that make a good photo. And then recency is also very important. It's important, uh, as we've discussed, to Google's algorithms uh, because they are taking that as a signal that a business is active and popular uh, in the destination. But it's also important to your customers. Your customers really want to know what things look like right now, not three or four years ago. A lot has changed in the last couple of years, and they're looking for reassurance that the place is open, that it's safe, and that it's providing the type of uh, customer experience that they are looking for. So here's an example uh, of some of these best practices in action. Uh, these are actually both the exact same plate of food, uh, these photos were taken at the same time and uploaded to the same Google business profile. Uh, the image on the left has a uh, great layout, great lighting, uh, looks really appealing, uh, where the one on the right honestly really does look like a plate of raw fish. Uh, and the, the proof is in the viewership of these images. The photo on the left received 10 times more views from potential customers than the image on the right. Uh, this is another great example of what uh, can be the difference between a good and a not so good photo of the exact same location. Uh, this is the Branson Ferris wheel uh, and the photo on the left is really great because it tells us what we're looking at, gives us a sense of place, but it also looks colorful, bright, fun, and exciting. Uh, the one on the right uh, is off kilter. It's a little dark. It doesn't look like it's necessarily even open. Um, so that doesn't give us as much of both context and inspiration for that location. Now, if you are using the search engine uh, results page editor for your Google business profile, uh, you are going to find the ability to add new photos to your listing uh, under edit business information. And you'll see there's a tab here for photos, uh, and that will allow you to uh, either drag a photo or uh, upload a photo from your device uh, directly into your business listing. Uh, some other things to keep in mind in photography best practices. Uh, first and foremost, make sure that you only upload photos that you either created yourself or you know you own 100% of the rights to. Uh, you don't want to get into a dispute with a photographer who owns the rights to an image. Uh, also upload the highest resolution and quality image that you have, even if that's a 4K image. Google systems are designed to scale the images to what they need for their outputs, but the better quality you put in, the better quality you're going to get out. Make sure that you're not using filters. Save your filters for Instagram. Uh, we don't want sepia tone, black and white, et cetera. Uh, we also don't want to put logos on our photo or ghost any sort of text over those images. Um, keep your edits limited to things like brightness, color, contrast, and saturation. You also should not go overboard with seasonal images uh, unless you are a Christmas wonderland and that is the uh, focus of your business. You don't want to overwhelm your photo gallery with Christmas lights or other seasonal images. We really want to give our customers a view of what the location typically looks like. Now, that's not to say don't upload any holiday photos, uh, but do make sure you're not getting uh, disproportionate 
um, with those seasonal images. Uh, my own personal pet peeve, because my husband's a photographer, uh, is crooked uh, images. Uh, keeping vertical and horizontal lines uh, as straight as possible really makes a good quality image. Uh, you'll find that Google prefers horizontal images. Uh, most of where they are surfacing business images throughout their products, they are utilizing horizontal images. Uh, and those are going to see much greater use than anything that is portrait oriented. Uh, lastly, and this is probably the most uh, counterintuitive recommendation for us as marketers, we always like to really focus in on showing people in our location having a great time. Uh, but Google actually prefers to see interiors without people in them so that you can actually see the scope and scale of a room, such as the bottom image you see here on this slide. Uh, if you do have people in your images, do make sure that you are not showing identifiable faces unless you have a release form from those people. Uh, and stay aware of other personally identifiable information, such as name tags and license plates that you don't necessarily want to publicly publish uh, without permission. One question we get asked very frequently by businesses is what to do about poor quality customer photos. Um, now, uh, in uh, Profile Manager or in uh, the ways in which you access your photos, you can look at the gallery of images that come from your customers. Um, now, while many of our photos do come from our customers, uh, turns out customers actually prefer to look at the photos that are uploaded by the business. Um, and when we deal with uh, customer generated content, we don't always get the best quality. Um, so when you're looking through photos that have been uploaded by a customer, you do have the opportunity to flag uh, poor quality or irrelevant images for removal. What you want to look for is this flag icon in the upper right hand corner of the image. Uh, if you don't see that, then over on the left hand side, there's usually a little three dot menu um, that will open up in one of the options there is to uh, remove a photo. In either instance, you're gonna get a dialogue that looks like this, that gives you the ability to say why you would like to see that photo removed. Uh, it can certainly be because something is offensive or is a privacy concern, but you can see there are also options here simply for an image being of poor quality or not a photo or video from that place. Uh, we do see that happen sometimes. I've seen photos uh, of things like car accidents and uh, demonstrations that are happening outside of a property uh, that get into uh, the photo gallery for a property because of the geolocation data, um, or sometimes places that have the same business name but have multiple locations will sometimes get photos from the wrong location into the gallery. Um, so those are some instances where we would utilize not a photo of this place. Next, I want to talk about questions and answers. Uh, questions and answers is a public feature which appears in your business profile. Anyone on Google can ask a question about your business, as well as anyone can answer those questions about uh, your location as well. Now, a lot of times we find that these questions get answered more quickly by Google local guides than they do by the business owners themselves. But unfortunately, our customers are not always right. In fact, they can be a bit of a smart aleck. Uh, in this example, uh, the customer has asked, when is the fall motorcycle meet? And our friend Captain Obvious here has said, I'd say it's in the fall. Thanks. Uh, however, we do have an informed uh, customer here that is uh, has let us know exactly when it is in relation to the first weekend in October. Um, so we kind of get a mixed bag of responses to questions and answers. These all come from what are known as Google Local Guides. 
Uh, local guides are your customers. They're people like you and me uh, who upload photos, uh, edit facts, edit missing places. And in addition to writing reviews and ratings for our businesses, customers can also uh, utilize questions and answers. Now, in the audits that we have done of business profiles, we found that almost every business profile uh, has questions for customers within it. 95% of listings uh, have questions from customers. But unfortunately, less than 15% of those questions are ever actually answered by the business owner themselves. Um, now, this uh, really can sometimes be full of some pretty crazy stuff. Uh, so it's worth checking out your listing to see what kind of questions are present there and if there are any that you can respond to uh, in a way that is constructive. Uh, these are some silly examples uh, from the Statue of Liberty um, of very bizarre things that people have asked. Uh, my personal favorite is what is the history and did a panda make it? Why anyone would have thought that. Um, within your settings, uh, you do want to make sure that you have notifications turned on uh, around questions and answers so that you will get an email or a notification when there has been a new question posted to your profile. Uh, when you do that, uh, you will receive a message to the email address that owns that business profile, and it will give you an easy way to hit reply now and answer that question publicly in there. Uh, much like, um, much like phot photography, uh, we do have a way to flag both questions and answers uh, for removal from our business profile. You just wanna look for this flag uh, icon uh, and click on it. It's going to give you the option of choosing uh, whether a answer is off topic, it no longer applies, or it's incorrect, uh, as well as things like being spam or inappropriate. Um, the other uh, opportunity you have too is to, uh, there's also a like button here. Uh, if you do have good questions and answers uh, in your profile, you can give them a little thumbs up. Uh, that will help push them a little higher uh, in your profile. Um, another thing that you are able to do uh, in your profile is uh, use your own frequently asked questions. There's no penalty for posting your own question uh, as well as a answer. If you have a couple of questions that are frequently asked by your customers, you can go ahead and post them in here. So you can both uh, post the question and the answer and even give it a thumbs up uh, for being uh, a, a good question and answer set. Um, there's a very new feature that also has become available that will let you automate answers to certain frequently asked questions in your profile. Next, I wanna talk about reviews and online reputation. Um, responding to reviews is uh, really one of the best ways to have a positive impact on our potential customers' perception of our business. Uh, reviews and ratings happen in a lot of different places online. Uh, this is some research done by Bright Local asking consumers uh, which sites they have used to evaluate a local business in the last 12 months. Uh, and this compares data from 2021 to 2020. Uh, and you'll see that Google was the number one place where customers were evaluating local businesses. But you can also see that that share of use jumped from 63% in 2020 up to 81% in 2021. So beyond just being the leader, they did see tremendous growth between 20 and 21. Uh, you can also see strong growth on the from the Yelp platform uh, as well as TripAdvisor. But interestingly, you'll note that Facebook actually declined in how many uh, consumers were using Facebook to evaluate local businesses. Uh, at Miles, we do a quarterly research with destination analysts called the State of the American Traveler. 
Uh, as a part of that research, we asked customers to rate the trustworthiness of reviews and ratings across the major platforms. Uh, so the question was, uh, how trustworthy do you consider customer review and rating information on these platforms? Uh, Google, once again, uh, was the leader in this area with uh, over 60% uh, saying that Google uh, reviews are either usually or always trustworthy, uh, followed by TripAdvisor at uh, almost 50%. Uh, the thing that made me laugh a little bit about this survey was the next one on the list uh, was Apple Maps. Uh, and yet Apple Maps does not actually have its own review and ratings system. They scrape reviews from both TripAdvisor and Yelp. Um, so uh, even though uh, folks consider Apple to be a trustworthy source, uh, that content is actually coming from either TripAdvisor or Yelp. Now, good news for businesses on the Google platform. Uh, Google uh, customers tend to be very positive in their feedback on the Google platform. 81% of customer reviews are four star or higher and less than 4% of reviews on Google are only one star. Uh, in fact, businesses have a 4.4 star median rating on the Google platform. And this is great because there is a solid percentage of customers who won't even work with a business that doesn't have a four star rating or higher. Now, uh, your customer reviews on Google, all of them are posted directly into your business profile, and they are gonna appear everywhere that your business profile appears. Uh, they are also the source of your star rating, uh, which is the average of the star ratings of all the reviews you've received. You'll find that you'll get a good number of reviews from customers that only provide a star rating and don't provide any written feedback. It's important for us to respond to as many reviews as we reasonably can for our business. Um, and not only does that create a great customer experience, both for the folks who have taken the time out of their day to write a review for our business, uh, but also for our prospective customers. When pr prospective customers see that a business is thanking customers for positive reviews, or addressing the issues uh, called out in negative reviews, they come away with a much better impression of the business as an organization that really cares about their customers. But there's also some science behind, when, about, behind whether you should be responding to your reviews. Uh, this is some research done by Uberall. And what they found is that businesses that responded to 30% of their reviews versus 10% saw an 80% increase in the conversions on their Google business profile. So our conversions on our Google business profile are things like click to call, clicks through to our website and requests for directions. So just by responding to three out of 10 reviews, instead of one out of every 10 reviews, businesses are seeing an 80% increase in conversions. Now we respond to our reviews, a uh, couple of ways to do it. If you are using the uh, search engine results page interface, you wanna click on the button that says customers, and that is going to give you access uh, to all of your reviews where you can use the reply button uh, to post a reply to the customer. Uh, there is also a thumbs up feature. Uh, that is a real quick and easy way to thank a customer for a positive review. Uh, if you are using the Google Maps app editing feature, you'll find that if you go into your reviews tab, uh, the reply button for reviews is integrated directly into each of the reviews that your business has received. Now I wanna take a minute to call out both the Yelp and the TripAdvisor platform as it pertains uh, to our online reputation management, because I think uh, what, this is important for the success of your business as well. All of the things we've talked about previously about uh, 
about Google in terms of keeping your core information up to date is important on these platforms uh, as well. Now, Yelp is much more skewed to the restaurant industry, um, although they do have quite a bit of accommodation data or listings uh, in Yelp as well. But uh, almost half of all reviews that happen on Yelp are for restaurants. Now, customers are a little bit more critical on Yelp than they are on the Google platform. Only 68% of star ratings provided uh, on Yelp are four stars or higher and 18% uh, of the feedback on Yelp are one star or reviews. Now, Yelp also operates uh, differently in terms of which reviews it will uh, feature for your business. They do not show every single review that your business has received. So if you're in the editing platform for Yelp, you're going to see reviews in there that are not showing in your profile. Yelp does something called recommended reviews, and they have a software that chooses what they perceive to be the most useful and reliable reviews coming from their most active users. Also, unlike uh, Google and TripAdvisor, Yelp does not want businesses to ask customers to write reviews. In fact, their software is proactively targeting uh, reviews that they think have been solicited uh, and hiding them uh, from customers. Um, so a couple noteworthy differences there to keep in mind uh, on Yelp. Now, when we look at TripAdvisor, uh, TripAdvisor has shared the four primary factors that influence what, what is causing uh, customers to engage with business listings on TripAdvisor. And those are the number of photos, the total number of reviews, management responses to reviews in the last year, and the number of reviews that have been received in the past year. So you can see three out of four of the engagement factors on TripAdvisor are tied to the recency, quality, and quantity of reviews that uh, your business has received. Now, what's unique on TripAdvisor is they have a popularity rating uh, ranking that I'm, I'm sure you have probably seen uh, for any specific city uh, or location. They will rank uh, attractions, restaurants, accommodations on a one through uh, however many uh, basis there are. Now, this popularity ranking is unique and specific to TripAdvisor. And it's based on user reviews, but not just your user reviews, but the user reviews against other businesses in your geographic location and competitive set. Um, so the ranking is based on the quality, quantity, and recency of guest feedback for your business, but also from the businesses around you. So you may be uh, on a regular clip of quality, quantity, and recency, but if a business around you has either um, had a series of poor quality experiences or has had an upkick in uh, high quality and quantity of reviews, uh, either of those can actually impact where you sit on the ranking. If someone falls down, you may move up. If someone goes up, you may be pushed down. Um, so there's a little, little bit more to it uh, than your own performance. Now, popularity ranking on TripAdvisor is recalculated every single day. Uh, and having a commercial relationship with TripAdvisor has no impact uh, on where you are ranking in those results. Uh, the other thing that is not factored in is management responses to reviews um, or re any of the sub ratings of those reviews. So those um, don't have any influence either, although we definitely uh, encourage folks to provide management responses to the reviews that happen on TripAdvisor. So to wrap up today, I'm going to talk about posts. Posts is a really underutilized feature uh, in Google business profiles. Uh, posts really provide high visibility updates about everything from changes in service to special offers and events. 
Uh, updates appear in the updates tab uh, within your profile uh, and really appear anywhere that your profile is viewed, whether it's in maps, in search results, on mobile, on desktop. Uh, they are always tied to the profile. Uh, these are absolutely free. Uh, and they provide a great deal of organic exposure for your message without any sort of pay-per-click responsibility. Uh, they're also highly visible, visual. Uh, you can have a photo or a video clip in your posts. Uh, more recently, posts have become even more important because of a new feature in the Google Maps app. Um, if you pop open your Google Maps app right now, uh, you'll see that there's a navigation item right there in the bottom left called Explore. And the Explore button is going to uh, curate updates from locations near you right now. And this can be a combination of articles posted by the local media. It can be reviews from local businesses. Uh, particularly reviews that contain a photo for the location, and it contains the updates or posts from local businesses. So in addition to being tied to your business profile, your post is also discoverable by folks who are looking in this Explore tab within the Google Maps app who are nearby. Uh, so this may be a great way to bring uh, new customers into your business who are in the local area. Now, again, posts are absolutely free. There is no cost per click. Uh, they are trackable. Uh, you'll be able to see how many times your posts were viewed uh, and any clicks uh, within the uh, within the button on that view. Uh, if you're in the habit of using Google campaign tracking code in your advertising, you can use that in a post as well. Uh, they're highly visible, visual. Uh, they can include photos and video. Uh, and you are able to link a post to anywhere you want. Uh, there are set uh, buttons that you can choose from for what that click-through button says. Uh, but you can link it to your website, to your booking engine, to your Facebook page, uh, to a community website, uh, anywhere that you want to drive uh, traffic. Uh, if you're in Google Business Profile Manager, you'll find this under Posts. Um, and again, there are six buttons that we can choose from uh, for our post, including Book, Order Online, Learn More, Call Now, etc but we have 100% control of what goes in there. If you're using the search engine results page editor, uh, you're going to want to look for the button that says add an update, um, or you can go in and look at your previous posts uh, and access the add an update feature either through, um, through this button here, or if I go into an individual post that I've done previously, uh, you can see there's an add an update, add an offer, or add an event button here. If you're using the Google Maps app, um, click on the updates tab, uh, and at the top of the screen, you're going to see the buttons for adding a new update to your listing. Um, again, this is what it looks like in the search engine results page, uh, where we can add a description, add a photo, choose our button text and post uh, our links. A uh, couple best practices for using posts. Uh, do try to use an attention grabbing photo with bright colors and a simple single subject. They are square in format. So things that perform well um, in Instagram uh, could potentially perform well here. Uh, you do have up to 300 words uh, that you can put into your post. However, it's really only the first 85 or 100 characters, so really the first two lines of text that are going to show before someone has to click more, to click read more to see the rest of the copy. So definitely get your point across and focus your message on those first 100 characters. Um, in addition to controlling uh, where your post links to, you can also add Google campaign tracking codes, uh, the UTM codes uh, to the link. Uh, so when you're looking in your Google Analytics for your website, 
you'll be able to uh, call out any traffic that came from your business profile post. Uh, another great thing you can do is keep two posts live uh, at one time. You'll get a little sort of maximize the visual space uh, where updates are showing. Uh, you can uh, remove posts that are out of date or set them with an expiration date when you set them up um, so that old posts are no longer showing. Uh, there is a new six month expiration uh, happening on posts uh, and we do seem like we are seeing uh, more recent posts being featured more prominently in listings than older posts. Um, do make a habit of posting regularly, uh, two to four times uh, per month. And if you've got an event coming up uh, towards the end of the week, make sure that you're posting early in the week in order to maximize your exposure. We've also found that the event style posts have the best overall performance. Um, they get the most engagement from customers uh, and they also have the greatest number of available options of detail that you're able to put in an event post, including the start date and start time, end date and end time. Uh, there is also a special post feature for COVID-19 updates. Um, should you need to provide an update of what's going on with your business, uh, if you post that, it does show up sort of right here at the top of your business profile um, and is labeled as a COVID-19 update. Um, Again, uh, posts don't expire unless you set one, so it's probably a good idea to set an expiration when you set it up so that old irrelevant posts are no longer showing uh, in your listing. Uh, lastly, uh, do take the time to take a look at your Google Business Profile Insights. This is how we are going to gauge the impact of all these great best practices we are going to be following for our Google Business Profile. Uh, you can access your performance data uh, under the Promote button. If we click on Promote, uh, the top thing on that list is Performance. Uh, performance uh, has gotten sort of a change of format recently. Uh, so uh, when you're utilizing it through search results, you are really getting the new style uh, of information. But your insights data is going to show you unique data that is specific to your Google business profile. It will show you how frequently your profile has been seen on maps, how often it's been seen in Google search. It will tell you keywords that uh, have caused your business profile to show up. Uh, and it will show you the distribution of that visibility between mobile and desktop devices. Uh, this is also where you can track your conversions for your Google business profile. So your phone calls, website visits, requests for directions, um, and depending what other integrations you have, um, the conversions that you have from that listing. Um, you do uh, have the ability to set timeframes for when you're looking at that data. Um, and so again, this is different from your Google Analytics, which is uh, data about your website. This is data specifically about your Google business profile and how it's performing across Google products. Um, so do make sure to check that out. Uh, so those are our best practices around maximizing your exposure using your Google business profile. Uh, make sure you're posting new good quality photos on a regular basis and flagging any poor quality or inappropriate photos from your gallery. Uh, respond to customer questions and answers, as well as reviews. Uh, utilize posts for what is essentially free advertising in your Google business profile. Uh, and keep an eye on that insights data so that you can track your success over time. Again, uh, Henry and I and our team here at Miles Partnership are available to help you with any specific questions that you have around uh, claiming and managing your business profile. Uh, the Calendly link is uh, in the chat uh, and available through this QR code. Uh, and I believe uh, Visit El Paso will be sharing this information out as well. Uh, we really want to thank the team at Visit El Paso for giving us the opportunity to provide this session to the community. 
uh, and we hope it has been insightful uh, for you and helps generate more conversions to your business over time. Uh, so we have a, a, a few minutes left. Uh, if anyone has any questions, uh, please feel free to type that into the questions and answer section uh, here in the Zoom tools. Uh, and we'll give that just a minute uh, to see if anyone has any questions. Um, Also, just want to reiterate, uh, go ahead and use the uh, Online Marketing Academy, uh, tta.tourismbusinessmarketing.com, uh, access code El Paso 22. Uh, this is also in the, in the chat. Um, this is a great resource on an ongoing basis to learn more about digital marketing topics uh, for your business. All right, well, I'm not seeing any questions come in, so I'm going to let everybody get on with the rest of their day. Again, thank you so much for joining us, uh, and thank you to Visit El Paso for providing this unique educational opportunity uh, to the tourism businesses in your community. Uh, have a great uh, rest of your day.